Hello, I'm Martha Stoddard, Artistic Director of the Oakland Civic Orchestra. Welcome to our first ever virtual concert, Voices of the African Diaspora, celebrating Black classical music and musicians. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we are a community orchestra celebrating our 29th season in the heart of Oakland for the heart of Oakland. Like other arts organizations, we have had to reinvent how we connect with each other and with our audience in sharing the joy of music through this pandemic. Thanks to the perseverance and creativity of our members, we have continued to meet regularly over Zoom, presenting master classes, practice clubs, and other presentations. We have produced a number of remotely recorded videos, which you can find on our website and on Facebook. This new chapter in our shared work has been the product of many creative partners who have embraced themes of social justice and equity to curate a program that features several generations of black musicians and showcases the talents of local Bay Area musicians. You will find new recordings made especially for this event, as well as highlights from our past concerts, plus a little background on each of our featured composers. We hope you enjoy our offering to honor Black History Month, and please stay tuned at the end of this program for more information about our upcoming virtual concert in April. Samuel Coleridge Taylor grew up in London with his mother. His father, Dr. Daniel Peter Hughes Taylor, was a physician in Sierra Leone. His ancestors had been freed from slavery in the Americas by the British at the end of the Revolutionary War. The young man became a romantic composer, a big success in Europe and the United States in the early part of the 20th century. He was called the African Mahler. Although you will not hear African roots in this particular piece, other works of his draw on spirituals and black music. Coleridge Taylor wanted to integrate African music into the classical tradition, just as Dvorak was doing with Bohemian music. This ballade has a forceful opening theme and a contrasting second theme, lush and passionate. Coleridge Taylor develops these first-rate melodies with inventive, brilliant orchestration, including great passages for the brass. It's entirely fun and satisfying. Enjoy.
At an early age, Florence Price was quite accomplished. She played her first piano recital at the age of four. Her first composition was published at age 11, and at 14, graduated valedictorian of her high school. She attended the New England Conservatory, earned her bachelor's in music in two years, and was only one of 2,000 students to graduate with a double major in organ and piano performance. In 1928, after navigating her musical career through segregation and divorce, Price wrote more than 300 works, including symphonies, piano concertos, and works for organ. She was the first African-American female composer to have a symphony performed by a major symphony orchestra. Price composed two string quartets. The second, Five Folk Songs in Counterpoint, includes the playful American ballad Clementine, which you are about to hear. Joseph Boulogne, the Chevalier de Saint-Georges, was born a slave on his father's plantation in the Caribbean. His father took him to Paris and gave him his freedom, as well as an elite comprehensive education. The kid made the most of his good fortune. He became a celebrated violinist, conductor, and classical composer. Mozart even roomed with him when he came to Paris. Saint-Georges was also, and we're not making this up, possibly the greatest swordsman in all of France. Today's piece is the third and last movement of one of his many violin concertos. It kind of sounds like a minuet, but really it's a rondo, characterized by returning to the initial theme repeatedly throughout the movement. If you heard this on the radio, you might wonder if it's Haydn or Mozart, which shows really how good he was, as well as the sad truth that by focusing on one or two luminaries from a period, we often lose sight of wonderful music from someone without a famous name.
Born in 1895 in Woodville, Mississippi, William Grant Still was known as the Dean of African American Classical Composers. As sound was being introduced in motion pictures, Still wrote music for films such as Lost Horizon, Pennies from Heaven, and Stormy Weather. Shows including Gunsmoke and The Perry Mason Show. He is the first African American in the U.S. to have a symphony performed by a major symphony orchestra and in 1936 became the first African-American to conduct a major American symphony orchestra. Miniatures, the piece you're about to hear, was composed in 1948 originally for trio, and in 1963 was later arranged for quintet, consisting of flute, oboe, bassoon, clarinet, and horn. The five movements are as musically diverse as Still's composition style, spanning across genres from the U.S., Mexico and Peru.
In his 30s, by about 1900, Scott Joplin, who started out as a railway worker, was performing and selling sheet music and piano rolls of his ragtime compositions. He was an innovator with stylish melodies and complex harmonies. They called him the King of Ragtime. A rag is based on repeating themes, very much like a Viennese waltz or a Sousa march. But ragtime infuses those European forms with syncopated rhythms. That's the rag part of the name. These rhythms originally came from Africa, creating a uniquely American mix. The ragtime style soon evolved into stride and then blended with the blues. By 1920, it became what we now recognize as jazz piano. This particular rag will probably be familiar. If you saw The Sting or were alive during the 1970s, you've heard it before.
James P. Johnson came up in New York in the early 1900s. He was a virtuoso ragtime pianist and evolved that tradition into what's called stride piano. He's the missing link between Scott Joplin and the jazz piano of Duke Ellington. And he was interested in composing. Johnson used that rag, stride, jazz musical vocabulary to construct a full-size symphony that premiered at Carnegie Hall in 1944. Unlike the work of Coleridge Taylor, you would never confuse it with Mahler. It consciously, intentionally puts the sound of the people front and center. We'll hear the third movement of this symphony, called Nightclub. It serves the purpose of a traditional scherzo, but this time it's an up-tempo update of ragtime variations. You'll hear the same basic material reconfigured a number of times, sometimes wild and almost unrecognizable, with different underlying rhythms and instrumentation.
Trumpeter Freddie Hubbard was born into a musical family in Indianapolis and in his youth was mentored by legendary guitarist Wes Montgomery. He dropped out of college at 20 to move to New York and got his break when Miles Davis heard him at a jam session and got him signed to Blue Note Records. He then went on to play with some of the biggest names in jazz, like Art Blakey, Oliver Nelson, and Herbie Hancock. He also made over 300 recordings. Hubbard was renowned for his powerful sound, technical fluidity, and improvisational creativity. Up Jumped Spring, an exuberant jazz waltz composed and first recorded by Hubbard and the Jazz Messengers in 1962, is an enduring jazz classic. Thank you. 
Valerie Coleman is the founder of the internationally acclaimed Grammy-nominated Imani Wins and is currently an assistant professor of performance, chamber music, and entrepreneurship at the Frost School of Music at the University of Miami. Coleman is best known for the composition of our next piece, Umoja, which was listed by Chamber Music America as one of the top 101 great American ensemble works. Umoja, which is Swahili for unity, is the first day of the African-American celebration of Kwanzaa. The Oakland Civic Orchestra, which is Umoja, or unity, for the world, our nation, and for all our communities of which we live and serve. Hi, I'm Margaret Wu, and I'm a member of the Oakland Civic Orchestra. I want to thank all of our members who performed and worked so hard behind the scenes to present this concert, and I want to thank all of you for watching with us today. We hope you will continue with us in our exploration of themes of social justice in our next virtual concert, a musical tribute to Earth Day, on Sunday, April 25th at 4 p.m. We'll share the link on our website, oaklandcivicorchestra.com, and on our Facebook page. Please also visit our website to sign up for our email list for future events, to see other videos we've made and recordings of our past concerts, and to learn more about us and how you can help support the orchestra. And please also invite your family and friends to join us. We're so grateful to be able to share our music with you during these challenging times, and we're looking forward to the time when we can perform in person again. Until then, please stay safe and stay well.